The newest Brawler Buster is indeed a Brawler Buster, and we are going to pit him 1v1 versus every other Brawler in the game. We're going to test him not only in base level interactions, but also in game scenarios against nine different categories of enemies. First off though, let's go over all of his abilities. Buster is a chromatic short range tank brawler that has a very respectable 8,400 hit points at max level. His main attack called Lens Flare fires out a cone of light that pierces all enemies within the cone. He deals more damage the closer he is to an enemy. Now at point blank, he will deal 2,368 damage despite what the tooltip reads. Now at max range, that number drops down to 1,275 damage. Now, since he is a chromatic brawler, you will need to purchase the brawl pass to ensure getting him this season. And if you do, I'd appreciate you oodles and gobs if you use my code in the shop. Thank you all very much for all of your support. Now that's all pretty standard, but where it gets unique is his super. His super ability called Montage is able to be charged not only by dealing or taking damage but also when teammates are within the small circle around him. When he unleashes this super, Buster projects a shield in front of him that will stop all damage from the direction that it was cast for 5 seconds. It will stop almost anything. Now I say almost because any damage from above, from the side, or even inside of the shield will not be stopped. This makes a great counter to longer range brawlers but bad against throwers and not so great against close range brawlers either. What's more is that this shield will reflect damage back to the enemy that shot it. This reflects 1200 damage no matter how much damage the projectile from the enemy would have done. Now this reflect damage has an internal cooldown and will proc a reflect three times Per second. So if he is hit with a very fast barrage of bullets, only three of those projectiles per second will be reflected. This is really bad news for brawlers that have long sustained damage like Pam, Rico, or 8-Bit. In fact, if 8-Bit uses his gadget, he can kill himself from one sustained shot. Ouch. Now buffing that shield even more is his second star power called Kevlar Vest. When Montage is active, Buster will take 20% less damage as well as he will be immune to knockbacks, slows, and stuns. His other star power is called Blockbuster. This one will allow him to deal 15% more damage for each ally that is within that supercharged area. So if you're stacked up with both of your teammates, you'll be able to deal 30% more damage with this star power. Although in normal gameplay, this won't happen very often and it's usually not a good idea to stack up, so use with caution. Now speaking of this supercharged area, his first gadget called Utility Belt will heal anyone within that area, including your Yourself. Now, for every ally within that circle, the healing is increased by 1,000, so it's possible to heal three players at one time for 3,000 hit points each with a single gadget. This is a very good gadget. His second gadget is also very useful, but definitely not for healing. It's called Slow-Mo Replay, and when activated, your next attack will pull in enemies and slow them down for two seconds. This gadget is very similar to Frank's gadget, but without the added damage. Now, Buster will have access to all of the super rare gears, but none of the epic or mythic gears, or at least right now upon release. So now that you know what he can do, let's see how he performs against every other brawler in Brawl Stars, and then I'll give you my thoughts and tell you where I think that he is going to be best. Now it's not a big surprise that Shelly beats him in the base level interaction thanks to her band-aid star power, and Griff manages to win as well, but M's close up has no chance as Buster isn't in that max damage range. Colette pretty much can't finish off anyone without a super, and Lola can't utilize her range or her ego in this test. Spike dishes out the damage, but he doesn't have the HP to stand up to him. However, take that into the game and you're going to get a very different story. Colette will do, well, what she does to all other tanks, and well, pretty much every other brawler, and that is to triple tap, followed up by that super. Now you may think the Buster Shield could save him there, but not so much. It can stop any damage unless the brawler is coming through the shield itself, and so this shield does not stop Colette's super. As far as Griff goes, he deals way too much damage for Buster to even approach him. The only real way for Buster to stand a chance here is to work his way into position with either the use of walls, dodging shots, or using his super to provide himself from some cover. But even if you make your way all the way up the field, do you really want to meet a Shelly in the bush? 
Next up are the spawners, and in a base level test, Buster absolutely shreds all of them. This isn't a huge surprise as spawners don't have a ton of hit points and they prefer the style of being at mid range to deal with their enemies. If Buster finds his way close up to you as a spawner, you don't have much of a shot. You see, normally as a spawner, you can throw down your spawnable as like an emergency shield, but since Buster's shots pierce, it's not gonna work here. He can kill a Mr. P and his spawner without having to deal with the porters first. And while Nita can do all right, she can't just trust Bruce to provide all of the cover. Now, this isn't a hugely skewed matchup, but for sure tips in the direction of Buster. So if you're playing a spawner, you're gonna wanna keep your distance at max as much as possible. Now, assassins rely on the element of surprise to catch their opponent off guard, getting up close and personal and getting that kill. The bad thing here is that they are going to have a tough time breaking through Buster's 8,400 hit points. Now, in base level interactions, it's mainly a losing proposition for the assassins. Crow gets stomped on in a hurry and Mortis, despite not taking full damage, still doesn't come close. Now, Leon has just enough damage to kill Buster before he goes down, but it's really close. Edgar, even with his fist to cuff star power, still loses and Buzz can't seem to find his floaty after that smackdown. Now that's a pretty bleak look for the assassins, but how might it go in an actual game? Well, it's still a tough matchup. If you're playing Buster, you don't have to fear about the assassins too much. The only exception here is of course Daryl. He gets close enough that your shield isn't going to really do anything and he can destroy that health bar. But then again, he does that with pretty much every other brawler. So what you will want to do if you're an assassin is be very picky about when you try to go after Buster. Now if you're Buzz and Buster has his super ready, be very cautious because his shield will shut your super down and leave you running for cover. Now Leon, he can get the job done, but if you're Buster and you're rocking that healing gadget, it, then that could be your best friend. Now, speaking of best friends, the throwers are not Buster's best friend. In fact, they're probably his biggest counter. Now, sure, in a base level interaction, they stand no chance. I mean, Tick, well, he never wins. And Grom may look cool in that new skin, but it doesn't last long. And while Sprout has a decent amount of health, he's no match for Buster up close. But let's take them into a real game where throwers are doing, well, thrower things, where they will absolutely wreck Buster. He has no wall break. He has no movement speed increase. He has no way to displace a thrower from the other side of the wall. And their shots, well, they ignore his shield. So this one is a hard counter. Now there is one thing that Buster might be able to do and that's use that slow-mo replay gadget. If he can catch that thrower slipping for just a second around a wall and pull them close, well then it's over. But otherwise, if you're a Buster and there's a thrower on your side, yeah, just switch lanes. Now let's get this out of the way right off the top. Every single mid-range brawler gets smashed in a close base level interaction, as you're seeing right now. Mid-range brawlers tend to be sort of like jack of all trades and they can do multiple things well. However, one of those things that they don't do well is deal with a tank in their face. There are, however, a couple of exceptions. Terra and Otis. Now, Otis is going to be very situational against Buster, and it's going to be very super dependent. If Otis has his super and Buster does not, then Otis is going to shut him down. That silence is just way too much to overcome. However, if Buster has his super, his shield can stop that silence from even happening, and he can easily turn the tables. This, however, is kind of how you're normally going to be playing Otis, so it's pretty standard fare for you. If you're Buster, Buster, wait for Otis' super to be down or time your shield just right, which would probably be pretty hard. And speaking of supers, do I really need to tell you what happens if Terra unleashes hers? Now this is another new category that I put brawlers that are primarily, they act as area control and denial. These type of brawlers do not usually have really high damage output and rely more on spacing. In these base level interactions, spacing is something that they do not have, and they get punished for it. But the interactions don't completely tell the tale. In a game scenario, Gale is going to destroy Buster. Now, Gale could have been included with the Tank Busters here because he will use that very respectable damage, useful gadgets, and that devastating stupor to keep Buster away. Now, if Buster does get close, then yeah, he's gonna be able to win. But it always seems like Gale has a super, and I think that Buster will be looking for someone else to pick on. Sandy, on the other hand, is going to be, well, in a world of hurt. 
He's not much faster than Buster, and his damage is just too low. So if you're playing Sandy, you're going to want to tread lightly when a Buster is in your lane. Now, Amber, she may be able to burn him down, but you're also going to have to be really careful when Buster has that super ready because, well, if you do the normal Amber thing and just kind of like face smash that one button, eh, you're going to find that your own damage is your demise. Now, if we want to look at a set of brawlers that is going to have a hard time with Buster, the long range brawlers are the first to spring to mind. Now, sure, in a base level interaction with Buster all the way at max range, just running towards them, some of them, they can do okay. I mean, heck, some of them even win, barely. I mean, not you, Piper. But Nani, good job. And even B wins too. Now, Brock and Colt, yeah, sorry guys, I forgot to test you that way, but we'll get to you in a minute. As for the other brawlers in this category, yeah, this was all expected. But 8-Bit, however, did win, even if it was by less than 100 hit points. However, there are a few brawlers in this category who are going to have a very rough time with Buster and his super. This is because, of course, Buster's shield reflects damage, and it's especially bad with brawlers with long-duration shots like 8-Bit, Rico, and Colt. You're going to have to be very careful around Buster. 8-bit players should never, and I mean never, use their gadgeted shot on a Buster if he has his super ready. If you do, then you could find yourself being taken down by one shot, your own shot. Singular, not plural. Now, Rico isn't much better either as those bouncy balls keep on bouncing right back at him. Now, Colt isn't as bad as with his normal shot, it'll only reflect twice, but his super reflects back three shots, which is 3,600 damage. That doesn't leave him much more room to spare. Furthermore, Buster will be able to use his super to provide cover for himself or to gain position on you. Once that happens, you're going to find yourself in a really tough spot. But one bright spot here is Brock, and that is because Rocket Rain comes from above, and even with Buster Shield, you can do serious damage because it will not affect it. But overall, this is going to be a very tough matchup for the long range brawlers. Here we have the true test of the tanks. Buster is the newest tank coming into the game, but he is a very different tank in my opinion. His close-up damage is not as hard-hitting nor as fast as some of these other tanks. Like Bull, he's able to deal all of the damage much faster, and Jackie with her counter crush makes Buster pay for every single hit. El Primo is a pretty close fight, but he comes out just on top, and Frank just has too many hit points. But it's not all bad, because Ash can't build up that rage fast enough, and Rosa, without her shield, well, she's not nearly as threatening. Buster's shield is not going to be very useful against the other tanks, with the exception of Frank. And if Rosa uses her super, then, well, there's really not much you can do to not end up on the losing end, so your super isn't going to be the greatest of use against the other tanks. Now, you can use that shield to stop Sam's knuckle busters, but they're just going to like drop right in front of you, letting Sam pick them up and keep on charging. So when it comes to tank on tank action, Buster is not going to out tank the tankiest of the tanks, but that doesn't mean that he's not a good tank. He's just a bit of a different role. I'll explain what I mean here right after we look at our last group, the support brawlers. So with our last group, we end on a high note for Buster. He's going to be going up against brawlers that don't deal much damage, don't have a ton of health, and as expected, they don't fare too well against him toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Poor Byron is still looking for his first win in those interactions, and Poco's recent nerf didn't help the already losing cause. Now Pam is the one bright spot here as she has the sustained damage to deal with Buster, but that same damage is exactly what can get her into serious trouble. Once you start that shot, you are locked in, and if Buster uses his super, you're going to self-inflict a bunch of pain. Now, Gus will have to use everything at his disposal to try to fend off a charging Buster and really rely on his teammates, much like the other brawlers in this category. Now, of course, all of these brawlers are going to do better in team situations anyway, so hopefully, if you're playing one of these brawlers and you have a Buster coming at you, you're going to have some teammates to help cover you. If not, your best move is just to fall back. So how good is Buster and where should you play him? Well, Buster does fit at home nicely with the tanks, but in my opinion, 
Buster is going to be the best tank for 3v3 situations in the game. Now, sure, there are much better options if you want pure damage. I mean, for that, just pick Bull. Buster isn't going to surprise anyone and just instantly delete them, and he's not going to immobilize them like Frank does, but he does offer something much more. His shield is going to be able to offer so much value, not just for you, but for your team as well. And he can heal that entire team in a pinch if you're using that gadget. But that's not to say you're helpless against the other tank like Bull because you can just back off a little bit and his range damage doesn't drop off near as much as Bull's does and you can actually win that matchup quite easily. So sure, he doesn't have the best damage or the movement or even the wall breaking, but what he does have is going to fit very nicely into a 3v3 game mode and I think this is where he outshines every other tank in the game. As far as game modes go, I actually think that he's going to do really well in just about every game mode. Now I'd say that his worst game modes are probably going to be Heist or Knockout, just because he doesn't have like insane burst damage in Heist, and tanks are in general a tough pick in Knockout unless you know the map suits them very well, but honestly, he can play either of them too and do okay. But in 3v3 vote modes like Gym Grab, Hot Zone, Brawl Ball, he's gonna do great. And even in solo showdown and duos as well, He's going to be really good depending on the map. All in all, I'd give him a solid 7.5 out of 10. He is a really great brawler and is pretty darn fun to play. So that's my thoughts on Buster. You guys let me know what you think down below. Enjoy the update. And as always, until next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.